What is up my bodyweight warriors and welcome back to starting calisthenics. Today we're going to be talking about the pull-up. The pull-up is the second of those fundamental pulling patterns and I don't care whether you're a beginner or like a complete advance, you're going to be doing some form of pull-up work or working towards a pull-up in your training. It is a vertical pulling movement which means it's going to fit into that vertical pulling slot in the Bodyweight Warrior ebook which you can grab for free down below and try one of those free programs. It is a fantastic builder of both mass and strength for the lats, traps, rear delts and biceps and it's going to be an essential move to master if you ever want to work towards things like the muscle up or the front lever. Just to note in today's video I will be demonstrating everything using the gymnastics rings because that's what I have available to me to demonstrate to you on. You will also be able to perform this move obviously on a pull up bar and it will be slightly easier because there is less stability requirement but it shouldn't affect the progressions or anything else that I'm going to be talking about in today's video. First let's start with some form do's and don'ts and cover some common mistakes with the pull up. The first, and this is a common pulling pattern error, is pulling with the arms versus pulling with the back. This is much more noticeable in the pull-up than it is in the row that I mentioned previously in this series, and it really is going to ruin the efficiency and the power that you're going to be able to generate because you're not using those big prime movers on your back to initiate the movement. Instead, what we want to do is think about the pull-up starting from our scapula and back and then radiating out into the hands as the last part of the movement. So thinking of starting and continuing the movement with that scapula in a retracted position is going to be key for when it comes to you building up your pull up. The second common mistake I see is quantity over quality again. And this usually comes in the form of half repping pull ups, either not locking out at the top or not completely dropping to the bottom. Whilst there is a place for partial reps, Generally speaking, we want to be using a full range of motion when we're doing the pull-ups. It's up to you whether you choose to go out of an active hang at the bottom. If you keep an active hang, you'll just be maintaining more time under tension for a longer period of time during the pull-up. The final common mistake that I see is the shoulder shrug when we're talking about the pull-up. This is generally due to the lack of strength in that scapular retracted position and is a common pattern to fall into, especially when you're fatiguing towards the end of a pull-up set. The main way to correct this is just thinking again about maintaining that scapular retraction, lifting up the chest during our pull up and also potentially ending sets early when we start to feel that form breakdown due to fatigue. Now we have that out of the way, we can go and jump into the progressions that you can use to get from not being able to do a pull up to being a freaking pull up pro and being able to do one arms. For each of these progressions I'm about to cover, you're going to want to be able to perform 8 to 12 repetitions of a given progression before you move on to the next and harder one. The first position we're going to talk about is an active hang position, and this was mentioned in the rowing video as well. The active hang is essentially the starting and finishing position of a pull-up. It's when you're hanging but having your scapula in an active retracted position. For those that can't do a pull-up, this is a really useful move to one, cue where the scapula should be, and also build up some low-level strength in scapular retraction, but also in the grip. A slightly more challenging variation of this exercise and a good starter for the front lever, which I covered in my front lever tutorial, is the scapular pull-up, which is only an active hang, but we take that scapular retraction a little bit further and start pulling as hard as we can. Now we have this foundational position, let's talk about the assisted variations that you you can perform to get your first pull up. The first thing to mention is really about building up general pulling strength. If you can't do a pull up, a really good option to do is just start doing more and more rowing movements and really build up your pulling strength using the bodyweight row, which I've got an entire one of these videos on and I'll link that down below. Next, I'm gonna mention it anyway, but I don't think it's the best progression in this case, and that is the banded pull up. This involves looping a band around the bar that you're gonna perform the pull up on looping it around your feet and then using it to reduce your body weight and therefore your resistance when performing a pull up. Some people really like this progression, other people don't. I've included it in this video just because it's an option you have. Give it a try, see if it works for you. If not, move on to the next one. The final assisted progression that you can perform and I would say probably the most useful is jump pull ups to negatives. This involves jumping into that top position of a pull up, so reducing that concentric strength and then slowing down that negative or eccentric where you're 120 to 140% stronger so you can overload that pull-up pattern. This exercise is probably going to be the main one you're going to be using when trying to achieve your first pull-up alongside doing some decent volume with the bodyweight row. You're going to want to perform this negative for anywhere between three to six repetitions and you're going to want to use a negative of about four to eight seconds trying to slow that negative down as slow as you can. At this point you should have 
your first pull up or you should be able to do a few pull ups. So let's talk about the next progression, which is hand placement. A normal pull up is performed with a hand placement just outside of shoulder width. If you're on a bar, it's gonna be in a pronated, which means palms facing away from you position. What we can do is we can move those hands out into a wide position pull up. And this is gonna focus more on that mid back. And it's also gonna make the movement a little bit harder. We can also move the hands closer together and it's gonna have a little bit more focus on the lats. And it's also gonna make the movement ever so slightly harder. As well as changing the position of our hands, we can also change the orientation of them. As I said, the standard pull up is performed in a pronated position. You can also perform it in a supinated or palms facing towards you position. This is gonna increase a little bit more of that bicep activation. Taking that one step further, we can perform it with a mixed grip, which is when one hand is supinated and the other is pronated. This is actually a good progression as well for those looking to achieve some unilateral one-arm movements like the one-arm chin-up. The final option, if you do have rings or a special bar at your gym, you can perform neutral grip pull-ups, which is when your thumbs are facing towards you. And I personally find this to be the most sort of anatomically comfortable pull-up to perform. Obviously, all of these different hand placements can be used with pretty much all the progressions we're gonna talk about today, including the ones working up to the pull-up. The next progression we need to talk about is body position. There's gonna be two main ways we can manipulate our body to alter the intensity of a pull-up. The first is performing the pull-up in an arched position, otherwise known as a perfect pull-up. This makes this movement significantly harder because you're gonna be putting yourself at a little bit of a mechanical disadvantage. This movement is performed by pulling the scapula into that extreme retracted and arched position, much like we see in the scapular pull-up, and then performing a pull-up where you would try to aim to get sternum to bar. It is actually a very impressive thing to see people do a pull-up with full sternum to bar, as it does require a very high level of pulling strength. Obviously, you can vary this. The more you're gonna arch the back, the harder you're gonna make this exercise. We can then take this the other way and take the body into a pike position and we can perform piked or even L-sit pull-ups. Again, because this changes the leverage of the movement, it's gonna make it a little bit harder, and it's actually a great builder towards people who want to achieve their front lever. The basic position for performing an L-sit pull-up would be in a tuck L-sit position and maintain that position through a pull-up. We can then work to slowly straighten the legs until we can do a full L-sit pull-up. A good option for those who can't quite have the strength to do a full L-sit pull-up is to do a tuck L-sit pull-up up, extend out the legs into a full L-sit, and use an L-sit pull up down because you're gonna be stronger in that negative. The next progression is gonna be the use of unilateral movements. So this is when we take a bilateral movement, so using both arms at the same time and we change it to using just one arm. The main progression for this is going to be the archer chin up or pull up. The, the end goal of an archer pull up is to perform a pull up with one arm doing the pulling action while the other arm remains straight and assists. This is a great progression for those looking to build up to a one arm chin up, but it's actually a quite hard intensity by itself. A good way to scale the archer pull up is to start in a neutral grip, but focus mainly on pulling over one arm, then slowly work to extend that arm further and further away from the working arm and eventually working to straighten it. A next step on from this would be performing something that you see all the time in calisthenics videos, and that is the typewriter pull up. So I just had to add this in here. Instead of going all the way back down, you can move from side to side like a typewriter and perform that archer pull up. The final unilateral movement is gonna be the kind of pinnacle of vertical pulling strength, and that is the one arm chin up. In terms of progressing onto this, a good way to do it is, as I said, using those archer chin-ups, but also using that negative concept we talked about earlier and performing one-arm chin-up negatives. You can also perform the active hang and scapular pull-up that I mentioned earlier with only using one arm as well as a good way to start building up for that unilateral strength. The final thing I want to mention is additional equipment. Obviously, the first thing that comes to mind is the use of a weighted pull-up, something that is essential and I think such a useful tool to overload that pull-up pattern. Next, we can obviously talk about rings as I've been using in this entire video. I actually prefer rings for pulling patterns simply because it allows the hands to move in a normal, natural position as opposed to being fixed on a bar. It also presents you with much more variation for performing your exercise, and I think it makes things like the archer chin-up much more fluid to perform. You can also perform a useful progression for the one-arm chin-up called a mantle chin-up, which I've covered in another video, so I'll link that down below, which is when you would adjust the height of one side of the rings so to place more emphasis on that working arm. 
But that is kind of all the basic pull-up patterns that you can perform from zero to hero. What I will do is because there are actually a huge amount of variations of the pull-up, I'll link to a video by Fitness FAQs in which he's got like 30 different styles of pull-ups and I think that's a good one to give you motivation if you do want to try out different things. But essentially if you were to use all of these different hand placements, body positions, progressions and combine them all together, you kind of got an endless variation of pull-ups to perform. That being said, you can grab the Bodyweight Warrior ebook with those three programs in it for free in the description down below and see where this fits into that. If you do have any questions about this video, about the pull-up, why not leave a comment in the comment section down below. You can also smash that thumbs up button if you want to support the channel and support the work we're doing here. Why not hit that subscribe button and join the Bodyweight Warrior Tribe so you don't miss out on any of these future starting calisthenics series as we now move into some of the skill videos. But that has been it for this week, guys. Have a strong week and peace.